had one of our first staple shows at the Highline, and when we first started discussing, you know, where do we want to do our last show in New York, it wasn't even a question. The Highline is kind of new, and I think for that reason, it almost feels more like ours. It almost feels like, not like I want to say it was, you know, used and abused by other bands and stuff, but it was like one of our first defining moments where like, wow, we're getting shown a lot of love right now, and it's making us feel great. So why not end our career with that same feeling, you know what I mean? You know, in our hometown, doing what we love. Daniel from As Tall As Lions. I remember the genesis of the band beginning with Sean, our guitar player, coming up to me after school, sophomore year of high school, and asking me to join him and Cliff and another friend of his who were starting to get together to jam and be a keyboard player in their band. We formed with a different bass player under a different name, and we did rehearsals in my basement at uh, my parents' house in high school, sophomore year of high school. We went to a Catholic high school, St. Anthony's, and I think that we were the only people in our school that didn't want to be in a band that was like extremely heavy. And after all this time, I should have known you'd wear me down, right down to the bone. You know you're right, I'm incomplete. And I can never write down what I mean Well, if you told me that the world Was ending tonight Well, that's all right by me Hey, babe, I feel as though I fail Life is 
So after doing the uh, usual kind of embarrassing high school bands that most musicians have to suffer through, we uh, grew up a little bit, went to college, and then we started Saw as Lions. And we put out the EP, and within a few months of putting it out, we had a few record labels calling us, and we went in for a few little meetings, and were signed pretty much the next year. It's tough. The old days were kind of a blur. I mean, for me personally, the first album that we did, Lofcadio, we had a different bass player and a different setup. We had an additional guitar player. And when we made the second record, that's when Julio joined the band. For me, nothing to say anything bad about the first record or the other people that were in the group back then. But the band, for me, really started with the self-titled record when Julio joined. Six years later, here I am playing in front of, you know, five, seven thousand people. All the time. It was just one of those moments that you're, you kind of like, wow, this is, this is really my life right now. <laughs> so, how many New Yorkers here have been with us from, from day one? Way, way, way before I, I joined the band. These fine gentlemen wrote, wrote a beautiful record called Lafcadio. So this song goes out to all the old schoolers and all the old members. And it was in that, uh, that helped this man move forward. So thank you for loving us. It just gained steam, I suppose. We kind of maybe had a little something going on, and then it seemed like I woke up the next day and then I had a career ahead of me. We started out on our first tour and it was the worst thing in the entire world, I'm sure. I don't even remember what it was or who it was with. We slept in the van every night and we hardly made enough to have enough gas to get to the next show, but we lived it up. For the first two years of touring, it was non-stop having a good time, just being able to play music, and that was success for us. You know, we were able to do that. Q101, as we are backstage, as tall as lions. It's so funny because I was reading about you guys. Three albums, three EPs so far. Is that right? That sounds about right. Let's go and, with that. Yeah. And let's go, let's go even farther. Um, bonus tracks, <laughs> instrumentals. Ooh, like, you guys like, do a lot of work. Just the thought of being, you know, like 23, 24 years old and, and getting paid money to go to a different continent to play music for people, you know, it's a little bit beyond your mental capacity.
Describe this uh, procedure. We're living the dream, I believe. We're living in a dream, I'm sorry. That's more appropriate. <laughs> We've been together for basically eight years. So for me, there's never really a defining moment that something specifically happened. The, the band took up so much of everybody's time in a good way. But as you get older, you, you find that there's other things you want to do and you know, other music you want to play, other places you want to live. You realize sometimes in life that the things that you dream about when you grow up and you think that certain things are the be all end all of what is happiness. And you could find out that those things make you feel more empty and more alone than anything else. So what if we don't If we don't feel interesting spot to be in when your band starts to grow and you start to spend all your time on the road and meeting more and more people and feeling more and more disconnected every day of your life. It's not easy to be able to control the destiny of something like this that involves so many people.
like you can get caught up in the moment of being on tour every day where like there's 500 people and they all think that you're the greatest person on the face of the earth. And it's intense to be in that environment on a daily basis because it's a false reality. And if you want to live in that lifestyle, you know, you can, but it's not real. You know, like, I guess it's real, but like, that's why I think some people get addicted to touring because it's like, they feed off that energy, but like, when they go home, there's not that. It's like a drug. It feels awesome, but it's not good to feel it all the time. It's just like, it makes your head swell, it makes, you know, I don't know. behind that drum kit and to do that every night I consider it a privilege. When you're so involved in something to the extent that we were with this group, it took up a lot of time and some of us felt like we were losing time, you know, and, and that there were things that we could do to better ourselves further than maybe what this band had to offer for us, you know.
I think there was a, a lot of different periods of growth. And I think that's one of the reasons why the band, I guess from album to album, kept on changing styles because we, we were always trying to grow and always trying to figure out what to do together. There was never like a consensus on like what kind of band we were. We were just winging it the whole time, you know, so to speak. writing song after song after song and just kind of seeing what my own limitations are. I feel like because of my own style of writing, I've gotten into a, a certain style that becomes almost easy. long time in our career, people always kind of jokingly refer to us as one of the biggest, smallest bands they've ever seen kind of thing. And uh, I think it's true, you know, like, in a sense, we were on the cusp of maybe 
breaking onto some next level of popularity or success or however you might want to put it. But in a way, I'm kind of glad it never happened for the sole fact of the experience that we have, especially live performances, sharing it in smaller venues. I mean, we have some of the best, most loyal, most loving fans that any band could ever wish for. trying to get back to getting uncomfortable, you know, you, you can never be too comfortable as an artist, so. I think when you try to endear yourself as a musician, or not even that, but as somebody that is drawn to creative aspects, it's something that never really goes away. We don't see you, we will see you. This is not the end. This song is called Love, 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 Love. Thank you so much. do is enjoy these shows as much as possible, you know, and be extremely appreciative of what we have right now in this moment. We're always focused on these little things involved with each day that 
you kind of sometimes miss the bigger picture of what's happening. I think we made the right move, you know, everyone has the music. You know, I have stories for days about touring and the people I've met and the things I've seen. And I love the dudes, we're all best friends and we all still play music together. And, you know, it's a real mutual loose thing. It's a really friendly thing. And we're all very excited to be doing this tour and saying farewell, you know. I don't know if it's forever. It could be two years, it could be 10 years, or maybe we'll never ever do it again, you know, but that's half the fun of it, you know, so. If you're passionate about something, and you, you know how you want to live your life and what you want to go after and what you want to do, you can do it. I can tell you that firsthand. We spent years sleeping in the van, not doing well, our record labels giving up on us, and we still pushed through, and now we're playing sold out shows across the country for our farewell tour. So it's not whether you can or you can't, you can, but are you willing to put the time and effort into what you want to do? in order to make it to the point where you want to be. For me, I, I couldn't have asked for anything better, so I want to thank everyone for, uh, you know, supporting us and buying t-shirts and singing along and stuff, and, you know, there'll be more and more to come in the future, so just, uh, you know, keep a lookout. This is probably the craziest crowd, the craziest show experience we've ever had. And I was almost like, wait, why are we breaking up the band again? I totally forgot the reason, you know what I mean?
Thank you. Any fans watching, thank you very much.